John Watson versus Mary Calkins. The, the self. self. Hey Watson, what is your idea or thoughts about the self? What are you talking about, Mary? What is the self? The self. It's the conscious being that allows us to experience life and gives us the will to do things. How do you even know there is a self if you can't see it? I think that science should be strictly experimentally objective. Psychology isn't about what we can see, John, but about our inner consciousness and how it experiences the world and functions using our body. No respectable science can believe something that isn't observable or testable. You can observe your own thought processes through introspection. Haven't you ever experienced imagination? But I can't observe another man's thought process or even my own. Even if I could, I couldn't directly measure imagination. And what good would it do anyways to society to be able to measure imagination? Well, measuring the self accounts for individual differences. And you and your behaviorists are treating people like animals to be trained and controlled. Well, that's useful. Look at the military. We are sending large groups of people to battle, and they all need to be trained and unified in their actions in order to win World War I. It's nice and dull that you are trying to use science for good. But just because you have admirable intentions doesn't mean your perspective is correct. Your efforts to train are impressive, but at the end of the day, it is the individual, the self, that will make decisions in war or otherwise. You have no proof that the self actually exists. This theory of yours lacks evidence and falsifiability, like the old theories of the soul. I do define the self. It takes in sensations from the body. It is active in willing the body to do things. If you prove that it doesn't do these things, then you can prove it is false. Consciousness doesn't exist, and your method of introspection lacks empiricism. Consciousness obviously exists. If it didn't, how would you have experiences in the form of dreams? And how would you be able to access memories if you weren't there physically and observably in the moment? My theory is empirical because you are observing your own mental processes. So there is no need to take jumps of logic to conclude that the self exists. Since you believe that the self does everything that the mind can do, why don't we just cut off your theory, since my theory is less complicated and more parsimonious? It is not jumping to conclusions to say that the self exists. It's common sense. Everything you experience is the self's interpretation of the situation, and everything you do is willed by the self. It is obvious to me that the self exists, even as the body exists. All of the extra steps involved in my theory are necessary to fully explain human consciousness and how experience happens. Your science is corrupted by your religion and you are just trying to make science fit into your beliefs. Um, yeah. I am a scientist and have experience with experimental psychology. I wouldn't be foolish enough to let my personal life affect my research. I just think that most modern experimental psychologists are so wrapped up with their experimenting that they do not take a look at everyday experiences. I and everyone I have spoken to on the matter have empirically observed their own consciousness. How can you think that the self doesn't exist? You are using it to argue that it doesn't. It doesn't. Behaviorists do look at everyday occurrences. They observe how people react when you put them in situations that stipulate certain actions or responses. Explanations for every behavior can be found in observable events. And even if you are right, this stuff that you are observing is a discipline of metaphysics. It should not be brought into the psychology world. It belongs in the discussions of philosophy. Your materialism and efforts to make psychology a pure hard science are causing gaps to be left in what should be studied within the discipline, namely the conscious self. It is looked down upon as a discipline because you and your behaviorists are causing people to doubt in things they can't directly observe or be able to measure in a lab. You are making people doubt their own experiences, which is not appropriate. For your information, 
my behaviorist and I have used labs for many years very effectively. It allows us to place controls that the everyday experience would lack. It is able to use the elimination of confounds to make solid discoveries of human behavior. My materialism is what is observable and provable. There are no gaps in science because introspection has no place in science. Introspection does have a place in science, but just so does elementism. The two schools of thought just explain human behavior differently. Introspection is experiencing the conscious self and acknowledging its influence on behavior, whereas elementism is experimental because it is the basis of structuralism. All of the discoveries of structuralism were done experimentally in a lab. Structuralism is like behaviorism, but behaviorism lacks the idea that people are capable of looking at their own thoughts and gleaning scientific data from them. It is clear to me that our views are very different in thought. You clearly take introspection as a valid way of getting data for science, while I only take what is directly observable. I cannot compromise my position just to make you happy, and you obviously can't come around to my point of view without violating your own common sense. It is possible that we are at an impasse and can no longer further our debate on the issue because of our conflicting belief about whether or not there is a self. I agree that neither of us are likely to compromise our position. I can respect the fact that you are trying to separate science and philosophy, but I think that your theory lacks common sense. Should we agree to disagree? Yeah, why not? Maybe your theory can be used in another discipline.